This edition of Mac Voices is brought to you by Ops Genie by Atlassian. With Ops Genie, your next incident doesn't stand a chance. Visit OpsGenie.com for your free account. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, as you know, I love to dabble in video, maybe a little more dabble than, than that just dabbling in video. Um, and I have no idea why we haven't talked to these folks before, but I'm happy to welcome um, Josh Davies, the founder of FX Home and the makers of HitFilm to Mac Voices to talk about HitFilm. Josh, welcome. It's great to see you. Thank you, Chuck. It's great to see you too. I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. So I'm going to just let you run. What is HitFilm? HitFilm is a all-in-one video editing and visual effects product. So we were looking at what was out there in the marketplace, and our users tend to be prosumers or high-end consumers and a bit of pro as well. And they were often looking for multiple different types of products. So they wanted to do video editing, they wanted to do titling, they wanted to do color grading, and then they wanted to do sophisticated compositing, so green screening, 3D environments, and all of that kind of thing as well, lights and shadows and everything. And there's one other product range out there on the market that can do that, which is Adobe's product. Um, but again, you needed plugins for After Effects to be able to do some of this stuff, and maybe even plugins for Premiere as well. And that made it cost prohibitive for a lot of the market, even more so now that it's subscription. So we tried to put together a really great product that it kind of houses all of those under one roof. So you only have to learn one product, and you can do your editing there, you can do your compositing there, you can do your color grading there, and you can actually then dive in and do really sophisticated visual effects work as well, all just under that one product. So you've only got one thing to learn. So the lightsaber. So it's it's not just an NLE. It is a bit more than that. It it sounds like you've you've sort of tried to take something like Premiere, After Effects, and maybe a couple other packages and roll them all into one. Absolutely. I think for our user base, uh, they were very keen to learn. So it's not a simple product. It's not trying to sort of uh, dumb things down. It is kind of a powerful bringing things up, uh, things from a higher end down to a, a more affordable price point and trying to package all those things together. Uh, there's really... I think I look at all of these products, NLEs, uh, compositing products, they're all just tools. And the artists are the people that use them or the creatives that use them. In the end, they kind of don't care so much about the tool, they care about the results. So we wanted to give them a lot of different tools all in one place so that they can get to those results really quickly and not have to you know, waste their time potentially learning five or six different products. I agree with you a lot on that. I think that there is, there's an increasingly large segment of the community that isn't in, as much in love with the tech as they are in love with what the tech can do. Absolutely. And trying trying to, to design and build for that market when sort of by nature so many of us are tech people yeah. is a bit of a challenge. I think so. We're very lucky here. We have, we've got a really young creative team anyway. And uh, I think the way that I've always seen it and I sort of have a more arty background than maybe even a development background is that, you know, I wouldn't fall in love with a particular paintbrush. I wouldn't fall in love with a particular color of paint. I would just look at what I can do with it. So we have users come and go, oh, your natural competitor is product X or your natural competitor is product Y. What we actually see is most of our users have lots of products. So on Mac, which is you know my platform that I've been using since I was a kid, um, virtually every single one of our users will have Final Cut Pro X as well. It's just you know they they, they buy the Mac product and it performs really well on a Mac system. So they have that there, and then they maybe use, use us less as an NLE and more as a replacement for After Effects and a replacement for some sort of 3D tools like uh, Element 3D and things like that. So when you look at our user base, it's, it's actually the thing that is most distinct is how varied it is that people just use the tools that they want to use. People even have you know multiple editors depending on what kind of thing they're making. They'll do a quick edit over here in one product and then uh, maybe uh, when they're doing a longer form thing, they'll work in a different product entirely. So yeah, it was just to try and make that tool that for people when they're getting into being creative as well, which is really hard, as we all know, it's normally littered with mistakes and folly and things not turning out how you want them to turn out. It's to try and ease that process and enable people to tell their story and be excited about it. 
So given that you're a Mac guy and you brought up Final Cut, which is my NLE of choice yeah. for obvious reasons, um, what what is a what is a typical workflow look like? I mean, do I do I do all of my project or can I do all of my project in HitFilm or can I cut it a little bit to some degree in Final Cut and and then take it over, bring it back? Is there is there round tripping? How does it all work? So the way that we 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 kind of have multiple ways that we work with other NLEs. So if you've got Final Cut, it's one of the two most performant NLEs in the marketplace. You know, Premiere and Final Cut, both when they're running well on the machine and Final Cut, as long as uh, it can proxy all your media and everything, runs blazingly fast. It's a great NLE. It's a good one to use. So what we try and do on that side is we actually offer a range of plugins. In fact, we have a completely free range of plugins that means that you can get some of our technology right inside your preferred NLE, which in your case is Final Cut. And then you would maybe only jump to uh, HitFilm when you were looking at using it just like a compositor, when you wanted some of those functionality that you would only get in After Effects, and maybe only in After Effects when you've spent hundreds and hundreds of dollars on plugins, you would maybe just do the those, those individual shots and those things where you're trying to, you know, maybe fix a problem in the background, add some titling, or do a bigger visual effects sequence. You do, do those in HitFilm and then use Final Cut as your main NLE. Uh, but if you did just want to use HitFilm, it is there for that as well. It's just we, we know people, you know, again, it's a tool. If you get used to using a tool, you don't necessarily want to jump to a different tool. Hence, we have so many, you know, Avid editors out there still that are using Avid when there's other systems out there. Um, yeah, so I think for us, it's to put our grading and some of our more simple visual effects technology right at your fingertips inside Final Cut uh, as native plugins, which is what we do. And then when you want to use the more sophisticated stuff where you're going to you know, spend maybe a couple of hours working and finessing on a single shot, that's when you jump over to hit film and do all of that work there. Okay, now help me out, and I want to be clear so the audience understands, and frankly, so I understand as well. And, and by the way, um, FX Home has been around for a quite a few years, 18 years. You, you found it 18 years ago. Anybody that's been around 18 years knows a lot and has seen a lot. Um, but in, 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 uh, HitFilm is not just your only product. So is HitFilm, are plugins to HitFilm what I'm loading into Final Cut to give me that? Or are those separate products and, and HitFilm sort of stands on its own? Uh, HitFilm stands on its own completely. So because we make so much technology in the imaging and video sector, what we do is, uh, so HitFilm has hundreds of plugins inside it, but it also has a bunch of sophisticated stuff to do with editing and compositing that you, we just can't replicate in other products. It's part of our actual like platform, as it were. So HitFilm is like the daddy product. It has every single thing in it. Um, but there are a bunch, a bunch of things that we do that are maybe common to all editors and all compositors that are just filters, so lens flares or grading filters, curves, uh, LUTs and lookup table type stuff. These are kind of common to every product and we've made some really great ones of those. So we thought, well, why just keep them restricted to HitFilm? So we actually make these as plugins for every other host on the market. So whether you've got Final Cut, Premiere, Sony Vegas, DaVinci Resolve, uh, Avid, uh, Grass Valley, pretty much the, the list is endless lots of our technology will work in those hosts as well, just so when you're trying to do something more simple, you don't have to do this round trip. You do not have to go out of your preferred product. You can just stay there and still get access to our technology. That's that's great because it lets me sort of get a taste for your tech and, and how things work be, without having to make the big jump the whole way over to HitFilm. Absolutely. And I don't think we expect people to make that big jump if they are already a professional and already have a workflow that they enjoy. I mean, we are gonna make our editor and our compositor better and better all the time. And for people coming into the market, new creatives, we intend to be the best place to start. We intend to displace uh, Final Cut and uh, Premiere over time as the best place for people starting out. But you cannot shift an industry model just by making a good product. Um, there's reasons why people have the Creative Cloud, incredible, and great reasons why they have it. It's a for a business. It's a steal. All of that software for the monthly price. If you are doing business by using that software, it's a great, great, great product. Final Cut as well, hugely optimized for the Mac platform. 
is anyone really going to be able to make an editor that performs better than Final Cut when they uh, make the, the hardware and they make the software and they make the operating system? So, um, yeah, for us, it's about working nicely with all those other products, but then also having our own product, which is a great place for all creatives to start. Now, earlier in the interview, you said that this is not necessarily an easy product to just pick up and, and run with. And I really respect that because so many folks get come, come on the show or, or talk to a crowd and say, oh, yeah, you'll understand this in no time. And to be fair, I, I don't think most NLEs are something that are just you get up and running real quick. They're not iMovie. You have to, you have to spend some time learning them. So how, how does this compare for a brand new user, you think, uh, that, to get up and, and I'll say competent with it compared to Final Cut or Adobe? I think compared to Adobe, we're in a, we're in a very good place. Final Cut has uh, done this sort of magical thing that maybe only Apple ever does, which is it will turn a, a paradigm on its head and just say, you know, this is how we want it to be from now on. And they have the power and the ingenuity to be able to do that. So, you know, their editor is their editor and no other editor works the way that Final Cut does. And it gives you great power while also really decent ease of use. Um, whereas we are more along the line because of where our users are of trying to create uh, and instill lessons that they're gonna be able to take with them on to the other editors in the market. So into the premieres and avids of the market, you know, if our users are generally of a fairly young age group, uh, maybe late teens through to late twenties, and they are trying to get in this to this as a career after college or university, then they are going to be looking at Adobe's products, or they're going to be looking at Avid's products, and then also maybe some of Apple's as well. So we need to teach them the things that they can take with them rather than you know, trying to make our own thing that is completely different. At the same time, only half of what we do here is making the software. We learned very early on that it's great making really high-end technology that's awesome and everything, and there's loads of people in the marketplace that can do that. But the main thing you need to do is teach people about it. So about you know half the team here are focused on our, our efforts on YouTube to put out tutorials every single week that teach people the simple things and teach them the complex things so they can copy titles they see on films or see on a TV show that they really like. So the real the learning aspect of, of, for our users is critical and it's something that separates us from everybody else because we basically base uh, our teachings and what we do on feedback from our user base and we kind of hire people from within our user base who are expert users to come and do those lessons and teach people genuine filmmakers basically uh, that's what a filmmaker wants to hear from is a person who is a genuine filmmaker not a you know a computer guy like me so, um, yeah, it's, it's a real big part of our story is just the training up on the software, but also that you know the things that you're learning can go with you wherever you end up. And we have no illusions that everyone's going to buy our product and stay with us forever, which is why we have a free product as well. It's sort of just, it's a, it's a great tool for getting it out there into the hands of people that just want to try things and want to learn things and want to be creative. Okay, first of all, you're reading ahead because you, you kind of went where I wanted to go. Oh, no, sorry. Yeah, no, 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 it's, it's, it's great uh, because that's something that I, my perception is that a lot of companies drop the ball on this. They create a great product, they have great spokespeople, and they're really excited about it, but they never show you how to use it. They, they depend on third parties, if any third party will pay attention, to do the training. And that's not something you do. You're populating a YouTube channel, and it sounds like you're doing it on a pretty regular basis. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, we are about to move to two tutorials a, a week rather than one. And it's a real big deal for us because, you know, we've all seen the videos done by the software companies where they show you beautiful footage and beautiful results done by amazingly talented artists. But then that's the depression point is when you download the software yourself and you go, I'm going to, I'm going to give this a go. And you're very lucky if you know where to start. And even if you do find where to start, you're very lucky to get that end result. And this is why, you know, Andrew Kramer is such a credit to the Adobe community because he actually shows you how powerful After Effects can actually be. Um, and they're very lucky, but you know, Adobe is this huge company and it has this huge uh, sort of monopoly on that end of the market. But uh, for us, it's like, well, we need to create this ourselves. You know, we, we need to 
not just go sit back and wait for someone to do it for us. So this is why we, we go out to our community, why we build stuff ourselves, because we want people to get our software and day one to do something that amazes them, that they didn't know that they could do, so that they want to learn more and they want to try more things. Yeah, I, I, I mean, that's, that's great, because there's nothing quite like seeing it right in front of you, seeing somebody do it. Take this, you, you, you select this menu item, you do this, and this is the result you get. And I, I, I wish more companies, and not just video companies or video software companies, but everyone, productivity companies would do it. Um, but I, everybody's busy, I guess. Yeah. Josh, um, you mentioned a free product. So, and so, what is the free product, and how does it compare? Obviously, it's not going to be as powerful, but how does it compare to HitFilm? Well, the free product is actually very, very powerful. So, um, when we, for years, we were trying to work out how we could do this. We're a small company, and what if you bring out a free product, and it means that you never sell a uh, version of your more expensive, well, your, your paid for product ever again. No one can pay their bills and pay their mortgages and you close up shop within a month, you know. But um, what we sort of realized is that we're very confident in our mission statement. We're not solely here to make money. Our mission statement is about allowing people to be creative and making those first steps into creativity be positive ones. And that's hard when you have, you know, like a $300 barrier to entry. $300 is like you're competing against cameras for one, you know, whether they're going to buy a new DJI or a new GoPro, uh, you're, comp you're competing with other software. And these are young creatives. There's a lot of different things competing for that dollar. So what we instead thought about was, well, we want to get the product out there in a big way. We've got this great technology. We want to see people using it. We'll make a free version of the software that for most people is actually everything that they need. And then it's only the people that really need the power, really want to do uh, a 3D helicopter flying overhead where it's all rendered inside the software and there's explosions and all sorts of stuff going on that then need to push on to what is a more professional level product. So the express product, as it were, the completely free one is probably 75% of the main product. And then another sort of 20%, as it were, can be... Uh, purchased as very affordable little add-ons if you want them, but you know, you don't actually need them. Um, you can do a lot of compositing, green screening, editing and everything inside just the Express software. And we don't do anything like arbitrarily make it slower or anything like that. The platform improvements that we make, and we've got some really big ones coming up, they go into the free one at exactly the same time that they go into the pro software. And we worried about how our pro users might feel about this, you know, that they're actually buying, you know, 25% of a product because the 75% of it's free. Um, and actually, it was been really, really positive. They've all said, you know, when they were at that point in their creative careers, they wish that product had been there. So they don't really mind that they are supporting that by, you know, being the, the, the early adopters, the users of the main product. If that allows us to make these free products and uh, get something out there that everyone can use and everyone can get excited about being creative, then they're all for it. So, yeah, it's been a really positive experience for us. I love the way you're doing this. It, it feels, as, as, as an Apple person, you know, it feels like sort of the iMovie transition to Final Cut, that they get you hooked on the idea of being creative and playing with this stuff for free, and then they find you find that you need a little more power and at least some of the skills you learn in iMovie are transferable to Final Cut. And so you're doing the same thing. You're saying, here, try HitFilm with, with no investment other than just your time. And then when you really need that other stuff, you can you know, either buy it as plugins or if you need the full-blown thing, you, you buy it. And at a price that is more than competitive with some of what you would consider your top-end competition. Absolutely. I think, to be honest, and I'll probably... I'll get told off after this, but if I could make uh, the pro product less expensive, I would. Um, it's really expensive to develop software, and particularly as the software gets better, it just becomes more expensive to develop it because you're having to push things that much further with each new feature that you're adding. Uh, and you know, once you've supported hardware piece uh, uh, thing X, you need to support hardware piece Y. So it's sort of never ending. But 
if we could get to the point that our user base gets to where we want it to, we would try and bring the price of the actual pro product down, if anything, because, you know, I, the, a dream would be, you know, someone comes along, buys the company and says it's all for free. Uh, because what we actually love doing is creating technology and then getting a lot of people using it. And the best way to get a lot of people using it is for it to be free. Um, unfortunately, we can't afford to do that. Um, so yeah, we try and just make the software as affordable as possible. And I think we will make strides, small ones year by year to keep making it a better value proposition um, because you know that's really what we're about. Yeah, but you know, the, the listeners of the show are, gonna, are sick of hearing me say this, but I don't like free software because I don't know that the support is gonna be there. The developers have to be paid. And if I'm gonna to start to depend on it, I've and 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 invest my time to learn it. I want to st- even if it's just throwing you a couple bucks. I want to throw you something to make sure that you're still around and maintaining your interest in it, because operating systems change, circumstances change. the The whole video editing thing just seems to be constantly in a state of flux. Yeah. I want you there, so you know. Yeah, I I, I applaud the, the free version for the entry part, but I don't think you need to apologize for charging because you you gotta you gotta eat. Well, yeah, absolutely. And, and we have to increase the team and we have to, there's a lot of training that goes into this. You know, we're competing against absolutely massive software companies, you know, like uh, Adobe uh, have teams working on their video products that are some sort of 20 times as large as our team working on that. And that's before you get into the marketing machine that is Adobe and, you know, Apple on a on a, fo- a video shoot for uh, the next version of Final Cut, we'll spend more on that video than is the entire turnover of our company. But um, you know, it's it, it is it is nice to be able to get the price right, though. And I think you know we, that's year on year we've been bringing it down to what we think is the right price. And I think we're we're getting there. Um, but I just I just want us to have more options for for young creatives that you know, where $299 is just still a bit too much to ask mom and dad for, but they want a bit more power than that pro version. So we're looking at what else we can be doing, but we just don't want to dumb down the software. We get lots of people that are interested in, uh, you know, acquiring us and what we do. And the first thing they will say in every meeting is like, we want to make it really simple. We want to make it like, you know, one button does this, this look. They basically want the Instagram of, video editing and visual effects and we're just not interested in that because it's it's a one trick pony it doesn't allow someone's creativity you know when they're following that tutorial and you're teaching them of how to add that lightning hitting that building and make the clouds look more stormy even during that process they are learning things that their mind is going off in different directions and going well what if the lightning wasn't lightning or what if it was a different color and we want that aspect of just freeform creativity being there all the time in what we create. And that means you have to make the software a little bit more complicated because you have to give them those options. So yeah, I think for us, it's not about it being cookie cutter. It is about it being affordably priced for those people, but it's also really about bringing powerful technology down to that level that people can afford it and making it approachable enough that they are not just instantly scared off by it. And I think we can do better on that side, but we always are, uh, evolving the product to make it nicer to use. It's the age old battle. It's it's like security and convenience. You can't have both. And I'm, I'm just not convinced that you can have the power that you're talking about with the simplicity of Instagram. It's just yeah. not there. Not if, not if you want to control it. I mean, there's certainly a crowd that it's fine for and, and they're happy with that. But yeah. for the folks that really want to get, and I know I can get picky about some of my projects, you just want to do that one little tweak. And when the software doesn't let you, it's just frustrating. Absolutely. Yeah, I totally agree with that. That's very much uh, my view on it as well, is uh, you, you, need, you need those tools there and they need to have the finesse that as a creative you want because it's, it's your project in the end. And if the tool doesn't do what you want, if it's a, you know, a blunt instrument, then you're not going to use it when, when you're working on your, your favorite projects. Exactly. This edition of Mac Voices is supported by OpsGenie by Atlassian. OpsGenie makes sure that when your next incident occurs, you and your team will be notified quickly and efficiently. No, not all of your team, just the ones who can take care of the problem. But what if they can't? 
Ops Genie includes a smart combination of scheduling and escalation paths. It gets kicked up to the next level, so more resources can be deployed, and the chances of your customers being dissatisfied goes down. And that's the point, right? Incidents occur. No matter how you try, they happen. What's important is how you respond, and how quickly. And Ops Genie is your solution. It integrates with other apps in your system like Jira, Amazon CloudWatch, Datadog, New Relic, over 200 in all, to make sure that you get the fastest notification possible when something goes wrong. And Ops Genie makes sure that the right people get notified, taking into account things like holidays, shift hours, and time zones, so that your support team is used effectively, but not abused. You can't have your service down for long. Customers start to consider other options when your service is down. Keep your customers happy so you keep your customers. Right now, visit OpsGenie.com, get all the details, and sign up for a free account. That's right, a full free account, not a trial. Then add up to five members of your team for free. Right now, all at OpsGenie.com. With OpsGenie, your next incident doesn't stand a chance. Thanks to OpsGenie for their support of Mac Voices. So if you will, walk us through the, the whole line of, of, uh, of F- FX Home products, because we, we started with HitFilm, and that was what we were primarily here to talk about. But I want to make sure that we folks know everything so they know how they can maybe graduate through your software up to the top level. Cool. Well, we have um, two Express products, and our Express products are free products. So you have HitFilm Express, which is an editor and compositor, and it does color grading and all that good stuff as well. And then we have a product called Ignite Express. And this is just a bunch of plugins for everyone else's editor on the market. So Final Cut, Premiere, Avid, all of those, you get, I think, over 100 plugins, uh, which are visual effects uh, and grading plugins for all of those. And they're both free products you can get from our website. Um, You don't really have to do anything other than just go and sign up for them. We then have the the pro versions of both of those products. So we have HitFilm Pro, and that is everything that we do with regard to video all in one place. So there is no better version of that. That is the best version. That's all the good stuff. And it has 3D modeling. It has uh, the ability to import animations with 3D, lights and shadows, and all sorts of good things in a particle system. It can support up to 8K and 32-bit floating point color and things like that. And then we have Ignite Pro, which is takes even more of the plugin technology that we have inside HitFilm, more of our uh, our top level, uh, much fancier plugins that are only in HitFilm Pro, and we make those available to all those other hosts, all those other editors. Uh, we then have a new imaging product, which has um, only come out a few months ago, and version two is coming out in January. I think I'm allowed to say that. Um, and that is a completely raw compositing product. So even more than the editing market, there is one product you do not compete with if you are making a uh, a photo tool, and that is Photoshop. You know, it's it is the the daddy of all of those products. So instead, we've gone a different route because what we wanted people to be able to do is do compositing of images, and we actually saw them doing a lot of image compositing inside our video product, and that's because it's completely non-destructive. You can change any choice at any point and not have to redo any work. It's, it doesn't bake in the things that you do to it like Photoshop does. So we have a completely raw compositing engine. So you can bring in all of your raw stuff and then change the exposure halfway through what you're doing and see how that impacts all of the other layers. And we also use a lot, lot of our sophisticated visual effects compositing techniques to marry the layers together really naturally without you having to do, as you would in Photoshop, duplicate layers many times and apply different masks and everything to get sort of light coming around the subject and things like that. And that's called the Merge Pro, and that's that's out now. And that all works on the GPU, and it's super fast and super quick. And then at the moment, we have another product as well, which is in beta, which is uh, an animation product, which is called Action Pro. And uh, version one of that will also be coming out in January, so moving from beta into version one. And that allows you to use different devices to record animation. So something we found with our users is working with keyframes to make really sophisticated animations was a little bit hard. So uh, we had a user that wanted to make a spaceship land. So a 3D model of a spaceship come in, slow down as it got towards the ground, and then just land. Um, They found this incredibly hard, and they spent like 
three days working with the keyframes to get the angles right and everything so that it looked uh, kind of like the big shot in Prometheus where the, the ship comes down and lands. Um, and we've thought this is, you know, this is ridiculously hard. So what we've actually done is created a tool that you can either use your mouse or you can use 3D uh, input devices like the Leap Motion device. That's like a little thing you sit on your keyboard. Um, or in version one, it, you can use just your your iPad or your phone and move that around, or a VR device just to record your motions and then bring them into Hip Film or in version one After Effects as well. So you can just literally record with your hands, like we all used to do when we played with toy airplanes, uh, the movement that you want and bring that directly into your compositing software of choice and use that to animate it. And it it really just does take some jobs that take six to eight hours down to taking six to eight seconds. Uh, so it's, and it's, it's kind of fun as well because um, you can mix different recordings that you do. So you could uh, draw a spiral and then draw a curve and mix those together to create a spiral that goes down in a curve and things like that. All the things that if you're trying to do them mathematically or by setting up rigging inside uh, an animation program can take you a lot of time and then you get there and you go, oh, this still isn't right. You know, with uh, this new system, you just record it again and record it again. And we've got lots of uh, visual effects houses looking at that product as something that they want to use to have just with every artist because it can just, even in previs, it just makes everything far, far quicker. Um, so that's just a, a sort of a small side project because we're always looking at VR and things that we can do over there as well. Uh, and we have another couple of products that we're looking into next year as well, but they're, they're very early stage at the moment. Wow. That's that last one sounds really interesting. We may have to have you back and, and get a little more detail on that one as, as it goes forward. Yeah, it's, 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 it's good fun to use as well. Um, you can actually, when you have VR, you can use the, uh, the actual headset as your virtual camera and you can even pull focus on objects and things like that and record that just like you're holding a real camera, but for your virtual scenes within a, like a, a visual effects sequence. It's, you, it's, don't want me, you don't want me to get any sleep at all, do you, Josh? <laughs> yeah. Well, well, we'll get that over to you in January and now you'll have to tell us what you think. That's very much like a, we're developing it. All our software we develop in conjunction with our users, but very much that software is kind of experimental. So we're very much putting it out there and users are telling us what they want to add. And then we're, we're just trying things and seeing what sticks is there, because there isn't, there isn't a template for this of how it should be done. So we're just trying to make something that's again, really easy and fun to use and takes a big laborious, painful job and makes it kind of fun and really, really simple. So that you, you know, your creative director can be sitting beside you going, no, 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 I want this. And you just can just do it quickly and they can be astounded by what's possible. Um, so yeah, it's, it's quite fun that one. And that's, that's some of the most fun stuff to do is when there is no template, when they're not, you know what you want to do, but there aren't a lot of expectations. It's just, oh. you can, you can do it your way. Very cool. Thank you. So where do, where do folks go to learn all about this? And I want to make sure I, I will make sure I have a link in the, in the show notes to the YouTube channel, but what is your uh, website? So yeah, we're FX home, the letter F for Freddie, X for X-ray home, not with an S, dot com. Um, and they can find out about all the products there. But as you quite rightly say, the YouTube channel is really where you're going to get the, the, the real nitty gritty about what we do. Um, the, the free product actually allows you to sample everything from the pro product in it. So you can follow all the tutorials. You don't have to pay anything to follow all the tutorials. The worst that could happen is you'll have a small watermark in the corner if you're using some feature that you only get in the pro version. Um, so yeah, go and get the free software. It doesn't tie you to anything at all. Um, you can very easily opt out of all of our uh, marketing messaging when you, when you get it. So you don't even have to get anything apart from your serial code so you can use the software. And uh, follow the tutorials on the, on the YouTube, comment, talk to us. That's the main thing we want. We just want to hear from people and their experience so that we can keep on making the product better. Great. Josh, we got to get you back. This was a lot of fun, and I'm especially interested in the animation project. So when, when that's ready, definitely come back. But come back again, and, and we'll, we'll talk again a little bit more about this and maybe even get a demo up. Yes, that would be fantastic. I'd love to do a demo of that. Everyone looks ridiculous when they have VR goggles on, so uh, I can prance around in the background and we can see it animating. Perfect, perfect. Thank you very <laughs> much. 
Thanks again. <laughs> Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. If you are interested at all in video editing, it sounds like this is something you need to go check out. And definitely go check it out at the very least with the Express version because it's free. You can get your toe wet, find out if you think it's for you. And if it is, you know, work your way up the, uh, the channel. And maybe even easier, just go to the YouTube channel and let the experts show you what it can do. Until the next time, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Mac Voices Facebook group and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices magazine, free on Flipboard. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us at patreon.com slash macvoices and join these folks who help keep Mac Voices coming to you. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.